A civilian airliner escorted by two warplanes, it landed at the RAF base in Scotland. Soldiers already in ambush were immediately on standby. The military have received word. The plane has been hijacked by terrorists, and it's packed with bombs. But they waited. Not only did they not see any terrorists, not even a single passenger. Only a little boy slowly jumped out of the plane. Soldiers immediately went to take the boy to the infirmary, and they brought in a negotiator. But the boy looked dazed and didn't say a word. He looked like he was in some kind of shock. As the expert continued to talk, the boy suddenly shouted to blow up the plane. It turned out that all the passengers on the plane had been turned into monsters. A few hours earlier, the boy and his mother had boarded a plane to New York to see a doctor. No sooner had the plane taken off than several terrorists joined forces with the co-pilot. They quickly hijacked the plane. And that's when the boy looked at the structure of the plane. He thought it would be safer to hide in the cargo hold. When the hijackers weren't looking, the boy quickly ran over to them. The unsuspecting mother immediately chased after him. But she was a step too late. Mary rushed to raise her hands and beg for mercy. But the robber, Tom, pulled the trigger straight away. After the robber had left, Mary's dead eyes suddenly twitched. A few years ago, when Mary and her husband were out on a trip, she had been bitten by a humanoid monster. When she returned home, Mary discovered that she had a strange disease. Not only had she developed sharp fangs, she also had an inexplicable craving for blood. Clearly this is a symptom of vampirism. In order not to harm her son, Mary had been using drugs to suppress the vampire virus in her body. But this was only temporary. As time goes on, Mary would gradually lose her humanity and become a real vampire. In order to become normal again, Mary contacted a professor in New York who could cure the disease. But as soon as she gets on the plane, she is met by a robber. Mary comes back to life and quickly makes her way to the cargo hold. After feeding on the blood of a puppy, Mary's fighting spirit is instantly boosted. She took out one of the robbers who was preparing explosives. Mary also learns what the hijackers are really after. A man on a New York-bound airliner. A man pulls a dagger and plunges it into the eye of an air marshal. Then one, two, three, four stabs. Until the air marshal collapsed to the ground. The hijackers had filled the plane with bombs. When the plane reaches its designated position, they would parachute out. Then they detonate the bombs to create a terrorist attack. After learning of the hijacker's plan, Mary quickly made her way to the cabin. She found a passenger who knew how to fly the plane and managed to change its course. The hijacker, who was about to jump out, noticed the anomaly. He immediately rushed to the cockpit. They demanded that Mary open the door. Otherwise, he would kill all the passengers. Looking at the innocent girl in front of her, as a mother, Mary couldn't stand it any longer. She rushed out and bit the leader of the robbers on the neck. The rest of the robbers were stunned. Then they quickly fled to the cargo hold. Mary tried to chase after them. But the vampire virus in the robber's bodies had already kicked in. She grabbed a dagger and plunged it into the robber's heart. Looking at the reanimated Mary, Tom suddenly thought of something. He immediately retrieved Mary's package, threw the medicine and diary inside. Tom learned of Mary's identity as a vampire. He also found a way to deal with Mary. Once the weapons were ready, the robbers returned. With the purple torch in Tom's hand, Mary was defenseless. But Tom didn't kill him immediately. Instead, he took out a syringe and drew a tube of blood, seeing his mother being bullied. The boy picks up the gun and threatens Tom to let go of his mother. But Tom wasn't afraid. Instead, he grabbed the gun. As the oxygen mask only lasts 10 minutes, the two robbers immediately ran to the cockpit and descended to altitude. Tom fled as quickly as he could. To prevent the vampire virus from spreading, Mary entrusted her son to passenger Jim. She then headed for the cargo hold. Soon, Mary found Tom hiding in the bulletproof car. But all the bullets she had fired had left only a mark on the glass. But she didn't give up. She pulled out a steel bar and smashed it against the glass. She finally made a small hole. But it couldn't do any harm to Tom. She could only watch as he injected his blood into her body. In a moment of desperation, Mary suddenly had an idea. 10,000 meters above the ground. The woman poured a bottle of spirits into the car and sets it on fire. She tried to burn Tom inside. At the same time, a fire alarm went off in the cockpit. The robbers immediately pressed the fire switch and headed for the cargo hold. Mary had to evacuate. The unaware robbers found Tom sitting in the car, so they opened the door. 
the next thing they knew. Back in the cabin, Mary was mistaken for a monster. The boy's explanation finally cleared up the misunderstanding. To stop the vampire from entering the cabin, Mary and Jim rushed to the cargo hold, although they managed to close the hatch. But Jim's hand was bitten by Tom in the tear. Mary saw this and cut off his hand to stop the virus from spreading. But just then, one of the injured passengers tried to stay alive. He deliberately opened the hatch. He begged Tom to bite him. But instead, Tom pushed him away. He lunged at the passenger. The cabin was in chaos. Mary rushed into the cockpit with her son and Jim. As the passengers were turned into vampires, Mary decided to blow up the plane. The consequences of these vampires entering human society would be unthinkable. But this was easier said than done, because the remote control to detonate the bomb was in the possession of the dead hijacker. Mary decided to detonate the bomb manually. When the boy heard this, he immediately objected. After shining a torch at his mother, he then crawled quickly towards the ventilation duct. With the purple torch in his hand, the boy was able to reach the detonator. But just as he was about to return, Tom suddenly lunged from behind him. The torch was knocked to the ground. The moment of truth. Mary arrives just in time. A duel to the death ensues between the two generations of vampires. As Mary had lost too much blood earlier, Tom soon knocked her to the ground. As his mother was about to be bitten to death, the boy suddenly shouted at Tom. He tried to get his attention. When Tom came near the bomb, the boy pressed the detonator. A powerful blast of air instantly sucked Tom out of the cabin. But he didn't die. Jim noticed and immediately redirected his course. He pointed Tom at the sun. The blinding sunlight turns him into ashes. Looking at his mother, who was dying, the boy immediately cut open his palm and fed his mother the blood. After an unknown amount of time, the mother finally woke up. But she had lost her humanity. Her remaining memory made her push her son into the sunlight again and again. With Jim at the controls, the plane landed safely. The boy pleaded with them to save Jim and said there were monsters on the plane. But not only did the military not believe him, they treat Jim like a terrorist. The standoff lasted from day to night. With the vampires about to move in, Jim decides to save himself. The general also gave the order to attack. Jim was arrested on the spot. When the soldiers arrived at the cabin, everyone was in shock. There was blood and bodies everywhere. And as they marveled, the vampires suddenly attacked them. The elite squad was soon wiped out. Night falls. The vampires jump out of the plane one by one. Looking at his unconscious mother, the boy cried out for his mother one last time and pressed the detonator. That's all there is to the movie Blood Red Sky. For those who like it, check out the original film.